Hello everyone. Um, it is August 23rd. It's a Tuesday. You can see it's getting dark here. It's getting late. At, I think it's about eight, it's eight, eight o'clock here. Um, but I just want to jump on and do a little short video. Short. I always say short, but then it'll end up being an hour long. <laughs> on using molds, different molds you can use. And, um, well, I shouldn't say different molds. I'm gonna show you how to use one mold. You know, you, I just, you know, the things you can find around your house for molds, I have literally shelves and shelves of, and, you know, uh, crates of different molds um, that you can use. I've got bowls from the kitchen and uh, I even, even have a frying pan that the handle broke off that I used to make, um, some of my bird baths and um and then you know when thanksgiving comes or a holiday they have all these plastic forms um at the grocery store for 99 cents or something you know i buy like 10 of them if i want to use them to make plates or something like that um and yeah so you know you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on, on molds now this here um i have fallen in love these are uh multi like a family pack boneless chicken breasts from tyson these make great uh platters what's nice about them is that they're deep i don't know if you can tell how deep they are there you know but they make a nice size and then um i'm gonna put slip white slip inside of here and i'll and i'll show you how i do that now my mugs um oh let me grab one of my mugs here well let me see if I can reach over here without breaking something. Ah. So I see I've got the slip on here already. I was going to show you how to do this, but literally I just, you know, dipped them in and that was it. So look, wouldn't have made a, a very long video. <laughs> but um, the important part of the slip is to do it when it's a little before a soft leather heart. You don't want to wait. You don't want to wait till the leather hard because um, this can crack off. But yeah, these were, I had made about a dozen of these and they were supposed to be um, mugs and I let them get too dry. I, I need to make uh, damp, damp bins. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, but people use um, um, Tupperware bins, big Tupperware bins, and they put like two inches of plaster on the inside. And then once once that's hard, um, you let it get, you know, really firm. And then once it's it uh, cures, and then you can add water to it, a little bit of water. And then when you make, you know, let's say people make like 30, 40 mugs, they put them inside there in a damp bin, and they keep for months. That's that's what I need to do because I, I don't know, I make them and then I forget about them. I don't really forget, but you know, you get busy and stuff, and you can't get back to it. And I end up with a lot of mugs with. No handles <laughs> now they become vases but they're pretty heavy I make I make my mugs kind of kind of not well not thin because I'm clumsy and I don't like I hate thin really thin mugs because they, they chip and they crack and then people make these really thin handles and they break off in the dishwasher so I make my mugs pretty durable and of course I make them big because I like I don't want to have to keep going back and making tea you know I can just pop it in the microwave. So anyway, so this is um, what I'm going to make. And um, let me move this over here. I made three earlier. So what I'm, my plan for these, and this is what you can do too. Because um, they don't, they hold up, but I've had to, I've had to tape them. And uh, so they, they do crack. And sometimes when you buy them, they're cracked. So my plan is I bought some, what they call potter's plaster. It comes in a big, I think mine was like a 50 pound bag. And so what I'm gonna do is mix up some potter's plaster. And I've got three of these. Actually, I have one at uh, where I teach. Um, but I'm gonna make three molds of these. And just you just mix the plaster up with cold water and um, and pour it in there and literally just um, I may I may I may oil these uh, just put a little bit of Crisco oil in them just so I don't have to worry about them sticking um, and you will I will get these um, anywhere where there's a crease you will get that so 
they're really it's nice if they're in better shape if you're making a plaster mold but you can always go back and um, you know sand out the clay or smooth out the clay or once you make the mold the plaster mold you can go back and sand it a little bit so uh, but yeah the plaster molds are nice because um, you know you lay your clay on there and within like 10 minutes you can pop the tray off and make another one so that's the nice part about the plaster um, so I um, I rolled out some slabs on my slab roller got a big slab roller it's um it's a I think it's a Bailey's it's, it's, it's a little bigger than what I needed to be honest but um, oh and so once I do the slip on these the white slip I'm gonna paint on them um, you can carve once you put the slip on you can do you know beautiful carvings and then fire it and then go back and paint, you know, within the carvings if you want. I'm not a big carver though, um, because you, I like, you know, you know me, if you've watched my videos, I like the black liner pen. Um, I use either, I use either one of these, you know, the, the number 20 tip to outline my designs, or um, I do like these, these were on sale. Um, Mako's designer liner. These are really nice because they um, their their solutions a little different than just plain underglaze. These will actually if you if you designed your design first with these and then you put underglaze over the top, unless you put like you know three thick coats or more, um, if you just put you know a couple coats of underglaze, this will come through. Whereas regular underglaze doesn't usually come through, but um, so I, so I've been kind of playing around with underglaze, uh, playing playing around with acrylics, trying to decide some new patterns and things to show you guys. Um, and you know me, I like to do doodles and stuff. So here's here's one. I think I'm gonna start doing some daisies. So see, you can just um, hey, cute. So, um, yeah, I don't know if you can see my little dots I always do, but yeah, so I think I'm going to start doing some daisies. The hardest part is getting that, you know, these are, these are acrylics, so they're easier to, uh, I think they're easier to manipulate, but I've been trying to, um, play with some acrylics to kind of think about designs I want to do on, I've been having so much fun with these. I might sell these I don't know um, but yeah trying to think of some designs that I want to do on my platters and, and bowls and stuff you think that'd be cool you know more things like that this is all kind of multi multimedia you know these are whoops these are oh, got stuff on there markers and stuff but anyway these are just some you know, playing around with. I think this one's. I think this one's actually watercolors. I think that one's watercolors. But anyway, so that's what I do. I kind of play around with watercolors and acrylics in my spare time. <laughs> Not that I really had much spare time, but um, just to try out new designs and things, you know, before you put them on clay. Anyway, so let me lower you down, and um, and I'll show you how I put this clay the slab in that form and I will be back let's see let me lower this a little bit there we go so here's my slab it's about it's a good quarter inch probably three more like three eighths or but it's I like it a little thick because when you put it in your mold like this um, when you when you press it down in there, you're gonna, it's going to get thin in the corners if you don't have these. This on a little on the thick side. So okay, so I'm going to put a little cornstarch on here. Now these probably wouldn't stick. Oops, I got a little little indentation there. I don't like. So these probably 
wouldn't stick to the foam. And I was going to do a test sample and I forgot. But um, just to be on the safe side. So this, you know, the cornstarch will burn out, but it'll prevent it from sticking to the tray. And you know, if you if you get um, chunks of cornstarch in here and you wipe it, it can make indentations in your clay. I have found, but nothing that's really you know noticeable. So okay, so I'm going to pick this up. Now this is hopefully this isn't too stiff. I I made these and then I ended up fixing dinner. There we go. Okay, so now when you put these in here, you don't want to just press down and then stretch all this clay around the outside of here. Otherwise, you'll end up with really thin corners. Uh, and that's the same if you were putting it, you know, on this side. Like when I make, when I first started making these, I put these on this side. This has a little bit of a lip here, which is kind of um, hard to cut. So... Um, but you, but you can put them on both sides. Uh, but you just have to be careful, too, about bending it over. You don't want to just, you don't want to stretch it because you don't want to end up with thin corners, and that's that's why they crack. So, let me see, get that out of there. So what you want to do is bend this up a little bit and let it slide down in there. See, like that. I'm pressing down with my hand on the inside as I lift this up. See, like that. So now I've got this down in this crease. I'm gonna hold my hand here and then I'm going to bend it over because I don't want it to lift up out of there. Now the corners you have to kind of, you will have to kind of press in. Same thing with everything, I'm gonna lift this up Okay, like that. Let it slide down into this crease. And then I'm gonna hold this in place as I bend this over the edge. All right, now I'm gonna do the same thing with the end. Lift it up first, then bend it over. And the same thing over here. Lift it up. Hold it down here in the, in the crevice. And then bend it over. So now in the corners, corners are a little trickier. I'm going to lift up this corner here. like that, and then just kind of press that in. I don't want that corner real thin, and then hold it down and press it over. Do the same thing with here. I'm gonna lift this up, kind of in a V. Try to get that down in the corner there, then hold it down in there as I bend that over. I hope everybody's doing well out there. Okay, and then one more. These slabs are dry enough where I could actually add slip to all of these right now. You don't want to, you normally you don't want to add the slip right away. Um, because then the slip actually can smear with the clay and you'll have brown clay mixed in with your white slip. Um, you don't want that. So I would, I, you know, you really don't want these slabs to dry out too much. They will bend much easier if they're damp. So I take a damp sponge now and just go around all these crevices 
Now this has got a little bit, my slab roller um, has a big sheet of canvas that you put the clay in between as it goes through the rollers. And um, so it does, I even though I um, um, use a rib, I use a, use a hard rib, I, I have a whole bunch of these. These are actually uh, car body. Well, this one I actually think is icing, it's to ice a cake. But then I have a bunch of yellow ones I bought. They were like $5 for a pack of 10 um, for car body. Um, what do you call that? When, you, when you're fixing the rust spot on, on your car body or whatever. <laughs> so, and they're really cheap and I, I love them. You know, because the other ones are nice, but, um, you know, they're so small. And I did have a big green one that I bought, but it's too, it's kind of stiff. And I like them a little bit soft. Um... So they don't gouge the clay as much. So I'm just going to kind of go around and smooth this down. And I'm going to press it over the edge. So I can get a nice clean cut when I go to cut these corners off. Or cut the, cut the excess off. You don't want to add too much water either. Um, you don't want your sponge to be too wet. That can cause weakness in the corners and could cause cracking. And we've all been there before, haven't we? Where things have cracked. I got a little hole here, so I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit of clay to fill that in. There we go. You really won't see it too much when I add the slip to it. So, okay, so I think I have this well hanging over the edge here. And if you don't get deep into the corners, that's that's not a big deal. These, these are, um, and I don't put feet on these. I'm, I'm not a big fan of putting feet on my platters. Um, it does make them fire easier because when you're firing a big piece, it heats up slow. You're heating, you're heating up the walls on the outside fast, and it takes a long time usually to get to the center, and that cause that can cause cracks. Like if you're doing big plates or platters, anything with a big flat surface, the problem with that, um, now I use a couple pieces of broken bisque that I lay underneath when I'm firing big pieces, um, because like I said, you want that airflow to get underneath, because... When you're heating it up, like I said, it heats up fast here, but this is still cold. And so you get um, that temperature difference there, and that's what causes the cracking. In the same way when it cools, the outside is going to cool first, and this inside is going to stay hot longer when it's in a bisque kiln or a glaze kiln firing. And that's what that's what causes big flat pieces to crack, is that, um, that fluctuation in temperature. So I'm going to trim my edges off. Now I use... This is from Bill Van Gilder, and it's uh, this is one of my favorite tools of all time. But you can use um, just a cheese grater. Take the roller out of it and use it. But you know, I've got a couple of these. You can kind of, you can't really see the wire. There you go. You can kind of see the wire there. But these are great when you're cutting edges off. Look at this. So you can just I'll pick this up here so you can see. But I'm just going to line this up straight. Okay, and just run this down around here. Look at that edge. Look at that nice clean edge. So, and I'm just going to continue. So you want to make sure you're not, you know, slanting it in or slanting it out. Unless you want that. But I like a nice straight up and down clean edge. And these edges on this tray are kind of beat up, so it does it catches a little bit on there, but you just kind of kind of go back and there we go. And 
sometimes if you have a lot, you can just go ahead and cut that off. Makes it easier to And these, you know, these are free if you're buying a family pack of chicken versus some of these, you know, molds you buy, these wooden molds. And the problem with the wooden molds is most of them are, um, they're shallow, very shallow. So, you know, I'm going to make a little chip and dip bowl here. But heck, if you have one of those shallow ones, um, the, the, the wooden form ones, you can't fit many chips in there. Heck. You're making salsa and tostito, tosti, ah, tostitos <laughs> or nacho chips. Heck, I want, I want a whole bunch of them in there. Okay, so now that I got that done, I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to smooth the edge here. And what's great about this is that, I mean, you're practically done. No, no trimming. Um... You know, putting feet on there, you don't need feet on the bottom. I don't, I, I don't know why people think they got to have feet on the bottom. So, so then I'm going to set this one aside. I'm going to let this firm up um, before I take it out of this mold. Get rid of some of that. So I'm going to set this over here. So when that firms up... I will pop it out, okay? And then all you gotta do is turn it over like that and run your sponge around the outside and voila, you're done. So um, now what I'll do drying these, I will set something, I'll put a piece of plastic over them and I'll set something heavy inside so they don't they don't uh, arch up. I really haven't had too many problems with these arching up. I think the uh, the thick, tall sides hold that down a little bit. I haven't so, but I will just take um, yeah, I'll just take jars of glaze and I'll set them set them in the center. So let's do another one. Oh, here's another one. This is a little softer than the other one. Now I, I have already on the other ones, I've compressed these on both sides already. Just to make sure there wasn't any air bubbles in it. I know a lot of people I know I've heard a lot of times people say, Oh, you don't need to you don't need to compress it. Um, but I don't I don't really believe that. Because it does bring air bubbles to the surface. Okay, so Let's go ahead and do another one. And I'll just use a big, you know, fat brush here. And this is just regular, regular cornstarch. And you really don't need very much. Now, if I was going to, hmm, you know, the next one I do, I'm going to do an imprint of a roller. And I'll show you that too. I did some of those where I was teaching, I was showing them uh, rollers. I've got some wooden rollers. I've got, I think they're all, I left them all in the classroom, but I do have one here, so. Actually, I'll do this one. So if you, this is kind of, this is not quite as wide as that. Oh, but that's okay. I can, I think I can make it work. Um, so even when you're, Okay, so this is going to be the bottom side, okay? That's going to go. But this side, let me compress this down a little bit. Only because it's got some of the uh, canvas marks in it. And... So this one, I'm going to also, if you're going to use a rolling pin or stamps, rubber stamps or wooden stamps, whatever. It really helps, and I'm not exactly sure why, but if you put cornstarch on there first, you'll get a deeper stamp. 
I don't know if it's because the, you know, the rolling pin um, doesn't pull the clay surface back up as it's rolling over it because, you know, the rolling pin won't stick to the clay, um, you know, but yeah, you get a deeper, deeper imprint. So I'm going to lay this the other way. Okay. And you really don't want to stretch these too much. Okay, so I'm going to roll up, I think, right in the center, because I think this is going to go curve up on the insides. And you won't, if I have to add a pattern, you won't notice it as much. Let me bring this back a little bit more. So I buy my rolling pins all over the place. Clay Share Market has some beautiful rolling pins. I'm sure some of you have used theirs. Jessica Putnam Phillips makes some beautiful ones. Um, and then uh, Pastry Made. Pastry Made, they support um, Ukraine. <clears throat> I guess they're out of Ukraine. <clears throat> so I bought some of theirs. Pastry Made, they make some beautiful rolling pins too. <clears throat> I wish I had my other ones here. So now I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. You want to be careful you don't stretch it too much. I'm going to lay this in here. Make sure it's kind of evenly on there. Kind of measure it with my fingers. Okay, so now the same thing with this one. I'm going to lift up the sides. So it just kind of falls down in there. And I don't usually put handles on these either. I don't know. I I don't know. I, don't, I just I don't really care for the handles either. But I maybe I should. So press that down in there. And then I'm going to hold that down and then press this over. Hold this down and press over. This doesn't, doesn't hang over too much here. Yeah, I've got plenty of um, room to make handles if I, wanted, if I wanted to. If I wanted to. Handles. Ah, that's just something I can crack off, right? <laughs> and if you score good, you shouldn't have a problem. Slip and score. I don't really use slip too much though. Um, I just use vinegar. So I'm going to hold here as I bend this over. I'm going to try and work this corner in while I'm over here. And I'm going to hold that corner down as I bend that over. Same here. I'm going to kind of put this in a V. And over here. Tuck that corner in. Like I said, you don't have to go all the way in the corner. Okay. So now I'm going to bend this down so that when I cut off these edges, I'm going to get a good cut. There we go. Let's cut this off here. This really does make such a nice cut. What's nice about Bill Van Gilder's is that it's uh, is the depth from here to here. Where a cheese cutter, you've only got like that much depth. So you have to, you know, cut off a lot of the clay hanging over first before you do the final cut. Whereas this, you can have a lot of clay hanging over. Ah, it's catching up on something there. There we go. But yeah, this is this is a wonderful tool. There you go. So 
Now these scraps, I'll dip these in my water bowl, set them aside, so that if I don't get to them right away, they won't be dried out. Oh, and a lot of people ask me what I'm working on. My surface here, this is a birch, piece of birch wood. Um, and I put linseed oil on it. And the clay doesn't stick to it unless your clay is pretty damp. Then it, then it can stick a little bit. But, um, but I, you know, it needs, I need to put linseed oil on here again. But one side is for dark clay and I flip it over for the other side for white clay. So I'm just going to go along the edge here. There we go. So now that this one, um, I will not put slip in it. Um, this one will get white under glaze. Can you see the pattern? Um, there you go. I think you can see the pattern there pretty well. Um, so since, since I'm filling in a pattern, this one will get white under glaze. So I'll brush after it's bisque fired. I bisque to cone 05, usually or 04. Um, usually 04, I think. So I'll, after I bisque fire it, I'll put white underglaze on it, let it stiffen up a little bit, and then take a damp sponge and wipe it back. And all the white underglaze will stay in these crevices. So I, I don't use the white slip when I'm trying to fill in a decoration or highlighting a decoration. Here's the rolling. Let me show you the rolling pin I used. So when I first get my, my wooden rolling pins, I wipe them down with uh, mineral oil or olive oil. This one here, I don't know. I think this is a pastry made. But, um, yeah, I've got about five of them. Some people have, like, whew, a lot. So, and, and what's nice part is, like, that's done. When it's, well, when it's firm, you know, I will turn it over and smooth down the underside. But for the most part, that is done. So let's do some, I'll show you the slip. So, okay, when you're adding slip, um, a lot of people um, make their own slip. I don't, I don't do that. Um, if you make your own slip, a lot of people add, add bentonite and different things to the slip to make it smoother I guess go on smoother and not crack and I don't really to be honest I don't understand all the, the logistics of why they add things to the slip but um I don't, I don't really want to I mean this was only like I think 10 bucks this whole bucket my gosh and it's lasted me forever when I put it away I always add a little bit of water to the top because you don't want it hardening up then you have to take a mixer and mix it all up again to get it nice and smooth. So let me find my, I'm going to use one of my, one of my favorite brushes, the Mako, the Mako number eight. This is one of the fluffy ones. Don't get those little chintzy ones. <laughs> um, these things are worth their weight in gold. I absolutely love these things. They're great, great for glazing, anything. Putting on slip. Okay, so I'm gonna. So I add um, just a touch of bleach to this, usually, uh, because well, you can add vinegar. Sometimes I add just a touch of bleach, so that it doesn't grow the mold. Otherwise, it will get moldy and it will stink. Because literally, this is probably a year, a year old. I've got another, I've got another bucket of there just like this. So I just went to my local clay supplier and just told them I wanted, um, I think this is a two gallon bucket of white slip, cone five or six. And uh, they 
just gave it to me pre-mixed. And this is this is the easiest way, really. Unless you're a production potter and you're doing a whole lot, you know. But I'm not a production potter. Okay, so so this is this is uh I mean this this is not bendable. It is it is a good leather hard. Um I actually sprayed it down with water a little bit because I was afraid it might be too hard. But just get a lot of slip. Just the same way you're putting clear glaze on. And don't worry if you splash it on a spot where you don't want it. Wait till it's dry and then wipe it off. Or you can just take a rib, a rubber rib, and uh, scrape it off too. And don't worry about making a mess. That's the whole point, right? Is to make a mess. Yeah, because I will, I will come back with a rubber rib and get it off the, the edges. I don't want it on the edges. So I'm probably doing, I'm doing two coats. Actually, it looks kind of. I've seen some people they just do one coat and they, and it, you know, the brown shows through. And that's really pretty too. So, you know, one of the risks of doing this too is another reason you don't want it to be too dry is because when you add all this moisture in, you can cause cracking. So there we go. I could take a I could take a sponge. I guess I could show you. So at the end, when it's usually when it's dry, I just go back. Oh, you can't see it. Take a rubber rib, then I just scrape it off. You see, it, it works much better when it's um, dry. There we go. And this is the cornstarch you see on the bottom that'll burn off. But yeah. So it'll be nice and dark on the bottom, which I love. And then it'll be white on the top. So I can paint some of my flower designs. And maybe some sunflowers or some daisies. Let's do another one. So I'm going to get a lot of slip on here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask a question in the comments. I usually answer pretty quick because I'm, I'm like most people, I guess, where my phone is glued to my hip. So I'm going to put one coat on first. And you could leave it like that, but I'm, I'm not a fan of the streaks, so I always go add a second coat right away. You could wait till the first coat's dry, but I don't really find it necessary. You just want to make sure you use a nice fat brush that has that you get a lot of slip on, so that you're not scraping the brown clay up underneath as you're applying the slip because then you're gonna then your white slip is gonna look muddy muddy brown there we go so I'm gonna let that sit over there so it'll it'll start drying pretty fast the other one has already uh, gone dull so you can tell when they're when it's drying because it's not shiny anymore. So as soon as they go dull, I know um, I won't scratch them with the plastic. I will cover them with plastic. Okay, 
once I'm done with these, I will wrap them in. I wrap all my stuff in plastic. Um, and then I hope to do a bis fire oh, next week. Or I'm running out of time. I got a show the second week of September. It's a three day show, so it's a pretty big show. And I'm hoping hoping the weather is nice. Cause I don't I haven't done a whole lot of shows this year. Usually I do more. But this has been a weird I don't know, it's been a year weird year for me. So I just coat it on and I did this to I did this to a bowl. I guess it was last year now, and um, the rims cracked because the bowl was too dry, and I added all this moisture to it. There you go. So there's the other one. So you can see the corn starts in the bottom, but like I said, that will burn off. So don't worry about that. But so yeah, so I will let these sit out. I can see this moistening up already and kind of wanting to deform a little bit. And that's why you, you don't you don't want to wait till they get um, leather hard is <clears throat> you want it a soft leather hard. You want it on the soft side. Okay, so that's about it for tonight. Like I said, this is this was really this wasn't very expensive. It's actually, it says slip cone six, so that's what I bought. I think it's well, how do they make it out of B mix? Sometimes it's porcelain. It doesn't um, you want your slip to be relatively uh, the same as your clay as far as shrinkage rate. You don't want to use a slip that has a um, a high shrinkage rate. If you have, say, B mix, or this is a this is actually brown bear, the shrinkage rate on this is probably about uh, probably about 12, 13 percent, and porcelain has a much higher shrinkage rate. So you really probably don't want to use porcelain. Um, because it has, it, like I said, it has a higher shrinkage rate. So the less grog a clay has, the higher the shrinkage rate. Because the grog won't shrink. And so if you've got a lot of grog in there, um, that's a lower shrinkage rate. So anyway, that is all for tonight. I think I covered it all. But yeah, I'm back. Why is at the end of every video I do something? <laughs> Remember the last couple of videos, the phone fell off the, see I've got this new phone with this big um, case on it. So the stupid thing would, um, it, the last two times at the end of the video, it fell out of the, the holder. And this one, um, I was trying to lift it up and, or move the camera up and I hit the off button. So it turned it off. So I had to restart it. And Anyway, I really don't have much else to say anymore. Have a great night and thank you for watching so much. All you guys are so kind all the time, you know, and, um, yeah, be kind out there. That's all I can say. Be kind. And, uh, if you have any questions, like I said, just let me know. And I will, like I said, I'm going to try to do a bisque fire probably definitely by the end of August. I do want to make some more platters. I'm going to make some more platters. I'm going to pour some plaster in these, make some molds. Because I sell a lot of platters. <clears throat> and um, and then hopefully, then starting like September 1st, you'll see some more videos of me decorating. Because that's my favorite part is to decorate <laughs> and paint. 
So um, you'll see some of those. So anyway, um, have a great evening and I will see you in the next video. And if you like my videos, please subscribe um, and share it. That helps me with my algorithms and all that stuff with, with uh, YouTube. So, all right. Have a great day. <laughs> Let me see if I can do this right. <laughs>